Hello, welcome back to The Daily Solve. I'm Chris Remo, and as you can see, this is not the New York Times crossword. I am um, traveling or in some other way unavailable to record today's proper New York Times crossword. So instead, I'm recording a solve of a crossword from not the New York Times, but the Times, the Times of London, as it's often called in the US. Uh, and therefore, it is a cryptic crossword as opposed to a standard crossword. If you're not familiar with how these work, I'll explain it um, in, in a little bit. Uh, this is the quick cryptic, so it's a slightly gentler uh, version of the cryptic crossword. Um, I usually solve the standard cryptic crossword. I don't solve it every day, but uh, but when I do, I try to solve, solve the standard one. But I also tend to have a dictionary on hand while doing so, um, which is not how I solve on video. So instead of tackling that with the dictionary, I'm solving uh, or attempting to solve the slightly gentler quick cryptic. Um, and hopefully I'll be able to get through it. Uh, this was constructed, one of the reasons I'm solving this, it was the most recent one as of the um, date of recording. So this is from the 19th of December, uh, 2023. Um, but it's published, it was constructed, I should say, set by Jalma, who's uh, another American living in London. So he and I have that in common and I've enjoyed the crosswords of his I've previously encountered. So I thought this might be fun. And uh, so we'll get on with it. But first, I'll quickly explain what a cryptic crossword is, if you're not familiar with it. Every cryptic a crossword clue will contain, well, I shouldn't say every, almost every cryptic crossword clue will contain two elements, the definition and the wordplay. The definition is um, a definition, same as you'd get in any standard crossword. It simply defines the answer. But you also get the bit that is the wordplay. And that is a kind of succession of sort of little puzzles that you have to solve in order to obtain the letters used that comprise the answer. It's sort of hard to explain this without just showing some examples, so I will. And the other thing is you don't know the order in which the definition and the wordplay are given. Uh, one sort of side of the clue is the definition, the other side is the wordplay, and it's down to you, the solver, to determine which is which. So maybe let's just try and solve some and see um, if that can serve as an example. So here we have agent uh, with assistance settled debts. Okay, so a very common um, usage of the word agent in cryptic crosswords would be uh, the short term rep for representative. So you could be an agent of a company, a representative of a company, of a company, a rep, and then assistance could be aid. So what that means in the case of this particular clue is that agent with assistance is the wordplay bit. What it's doing is it's contributing two separate words, agent and rep, but they go, sorry, rep and aid. They go successively to create the word repaid. That is defined by this clue's definition, settled debts. If you've settled debts, you've repaid those debts. And um, so this was actually a fairly straightforward clue, which is helpful as a, as a beginning uh, example. Uh, but as you can see, the definition here, settled debts, fell at the end of the clue, not the beginning. You don't know which, which side it's going to be on. Let's try this one. Hand in your notice or agree to an updated contract. Hand in your notice or agree to an updated contract. Oh, right. Okay. This is, I think this is a, unless I'm missing something, this is a, um, a, a relatively uncommon category of clue called a double definition. Uh, and the way this works is that both sides of the clue actually serve as an ordinary crossword style definition. So what this is basically saying is hand in your notice is one way to define the answer or agree to an updated contract is another way to uh, define the answer. So I think the answer is resign. You could say you hand in your notice, you resign from your position, or you could re-sign a new contract, an updated contract. So this word is actually defined twice in the answer, and there's no traditional wordplay. There are just two definitions. All right, let's see. This is interesting. We have I dash something. Children's game is pretty devoid of content. So I read I read that in a sort in a slightly odd way because I read it the way that I think it probably is meant to be parsed. So my guess here is that the definition is children's game and the wordplay will work. I, it'll probably be a, a synonym for pretty, which is devoid of its content, maybe? Or maybe it's maybe is. Maybe is. Oh, I see or something pretty devoid of content. 
Oh, no, 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 it isn't. Oh, it's just, it's not a synonym of pretty. It's just the word pretty. Okay, so the children's game is I spy. That's the definition. Well, children's game is the definition. Is actually just goes straight into the puzzle. So sometimes wordplay is just the actual letters that are given in the wordplay um, bit. It's just that exact word is goes in as is. And then we have pretty devoid of content. So pretty devoid of its contents of the sort of things inside of it. So we remove the inside of pretty. We take out the R-E-T-T. -T, we're left with P-Y. And then we have I-S from is, P-Y from pretty devoid of content. We're left with I spy. All right. Saw traveler entering pubs regularly. All right. So regularly is another common element of wordplay in um, in cryptic crossword clues. And often what it means is you'll be sort of pulling out letters regularly spaced from from what was previously or, or some some word in the in the in the wordplay. So I think what is going on here is pubs regularly is probably the letters PB. In other words, if you take every other letter in pubs, you get P and B. The reason I think that is because there's a P here. Um, and then I think what we're going to get is travel, a word for traveler entering pubs regularly. So going into PB. So saw, uh, maybe, does, hmm. Saw, so, oh, a saw, maybe it's a saw as in an adage or a, um, a uh, what would be a what would be a like a pro a proverb? Yes, that's that's what I was looking for. Okay, so travel. Yes, and indeed, a traveler is a rover. So someone who travels, someone who roves or roams. Uh, the rover enters PB pubs regularly. Great. Okay, and then a saw, an old bromide, an old saying would be a, pro a proverb. All right, here we have tri physical training taking in university field event. Try physical training, taking in, taking in university sounds like you, which is a valid abbreviation for university, is going to go into physical training maybe, which could be PT or PE for physical education. So yes, it is. Okay. So the U goes into PT for physical training and then shot will be, okay. So shot put is a field event. So field event here is the definition. Um, try, if you, let's say, have a try, have a shot, take a try at it, take a shot. So try is simply shot. We put that in here. And then university goes, is taken into PT for physical training. And we get shot put, a field event. All right. In cooking, he employed cl uh, clarified butter. Well, right away, I'm going to say ghee is clarified butter in Indian cookery, Indian cuisine. So clarified butter is the definition. Ghee is the answer. So now we have to figure out why. In cooking, he employed. In cooking, he... Well, he is right there. Oh, oh, no, 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 it's not. Sorry. Okay. This is a category of clue called a, a hidden... I think it's, I think it's referred to hidden. Uh, so in cooking, he employed, you can see ghee is actually spelled out the G at the end of cooking, then H E, then the E and employed ghee is actually just written in there. And the in is the indicator that, that, that points us in that direction. So there we go. Uh, ghee is simply found inside of the wordplay. All right, here we have type of communication requiring great help, possibly. Type of communication. Maybe that's the clue. A telegraph, maybe. I'm just I'm just trying to think of modes of communication that start with a T. Can we can we justify that? Yes, we can. We can. So type of communication is indeed the definition. Um, requiring in this case is simply a link, the, a linking word, which means uh, it just connects. It, it, it's just sort of, you can look at it either as connecting or separating the definition from the wordplay. So type of communication is the definition. Requiring is saying, well, to get that, to get the answer telegraph, it requires solving this wordplay. And the wordplay is great help anagrammed. And the anagram indicator is this word possibly. So if you sort of imagine a possible arrangement of the letters in great help, you could rearrange those to form the word telegraph. That's very clever. Great. I mean, great help. 
is such a sort of innocuous sounding phrase, you wouldn't guess that it would anagram to something completely different like this, telegraph, very good. So possibly there is just is indicating that we need to anagram the letters in great help. All right, what now? Every husband-to-be initially ignored marriage. Every husband-to-be, every can be all sort, uh, quite a few things. Every could be, actually it could be all, because we have A-L-L, or sorry, we have the L here. We could put all, every example, all, all example that maybe, every could also be, no, never mind. I was going to say it could just be A, but it's more that each could be A, but. Uh, yeah, okay, so maybe it is, oh, alliance maybe? Could could a marriage be an alliance in the sense of a kind of, you know, sort of medieval marriage for political purposes or something? Every husband-to-be initially, yeah, it is that. That is the answer. Um, so a husband-to-be is a fiancé, uh, and you can you can then see, well, there isn't doesn't say fiancé, it just says eoncé, and the reason that is valid is because it's the husband to be initially ignored. So the initial, the first letter of fiance is ignored. We don't put it in. So we have every is all, and then husband to be initially ignored is fiance here. And then marriage is an alliance of, of two people, essentially. All right, let's look at this clue. Midwesterner one performing around Washington. So Washington could maybe be WA, the abbreviation of the U.S. state. It could, it could be D.C., I suppose, the capital of the U.S. That seems less likely to be in the middle of a five-letter word to me. Um, I don't know if this is the position. I'm just kind of putting it. Oh, no, no, no. This isn't where it goes because the definition is Midwesterner, uh, and that's an Iowan, someone from the state of Iowa, which is a Midwestern U.S. state. It's interesting that it has two different U.S. states in here, one uh, answering the definition uh, of sort of, well, a resident of that state, and then also a different U.S. state, Washington, being used in the wordplay. Anyway, let's solve the rest of it. So one is simply the letter I. This is one of the most common cryptic crossword abbreviations you'll encounter, I for one. You could look at that as maybe a stylized representation of a one. The way I tend to think of it is that it's the Roman numeral one. I think that is a more accurate way of interpreting why one is so often I. It's the Roman numeral for one. So anyway, we have one is I, and then performing. Ah, if you're performing, you're on. Someone might say, ah, that person is, you know, it's, you're on it, to, to, to an actor about to go on stage. You're performing now. It's You're on. Or I guess you could look at it as maybe an appliance is sort of performing its role. It's on, it's operating. Um, in any case, on is performing here. It's around. It's literally in closing. It's around the letters WA for Washington. And then we get Iowan. All right. It's a nasty, concerning, scornful piece of work. Uh, I'm wondering if it's a nasty, if, if nasty is serving as an anagram indicator on it's a, if you kind of imagine, you know, messing with or, or, or sort of nastily kind of, uh, disturbing the letters and it's a, you could imagine anagramming it. And then concerning, that is in fact how it works. Yes. Okay. So if you, if you could imagine anagramming it's a to S-A-T-I, which is a, another arrangement of those same letters, concerning is uh, very often uh, indicating R-E, regarding, you know, if you had a subject line of an email, it could say R-E, the memo I, you know, the, the bill I sent you. It's concerning the bill I sent you. Um, so that's the concerning. And then a scornful piece of work could well be satire. You could satirize something um, and, you know, sort of scornfully depict it through your, your satirical uh, rhetoric. So there we go. All right. Uh, cunning adversary removing header from public record. Cunning adversary, antagonist or an cunning adversary public record. I don't know which side of this I think is the, well, actually, no, I think probably the definition is cunning or cunning adversary because removing header from public record makes me want to remove the first letter from something that means public or public record. An almanac or an annal or something, but those both have the A, which is being referenced here. What is a public record in which A is the second letter? <laughs> um, I'm I'm not sure off the top of my head. Let's look at this one. 
trainee dismissing the first profitable venture. Trainee dismissing the first profitable venture. Tra Again, this, this reads similarly to me to this one in the sense that what it looks like is a word for trainee dismissing the first, dismissing its first letter. So if you imagine a word for trainee, yes, okay, a trainee could be a learner, someone who's learning. So a learner minus its first letter, minus the L, um, is an earner. And you could describe a profitable venture, something that's earning money, as an earner. Okay, so there we go. After courageously observing at first, we run and cringe in fear. Well, based on the, the crosses here, immediately the thing that comes to mind to me for me by we, not by we, sorry, but by run and cringe in fear, that looks like cower or maybe just cringe in fear, maybe not run, but just cringe in fear might be the definition here. So can we figure out why? After, yes. Okay. So after courage, courage courageously observing at first, so after the first letters of courageously observing. So after C-O, um, we, then just the word we, we just put that. So after C-O, we run. Uh, run can be abbreviated R. I think that's a, um, I, think it, I think that generally in the case of cryptic crosswords is a, um, I think it's a cricket uh, reference. R for run or runs in cricket. It can be run or runs. Um, I think that's what that's referencing, but R is a very common uh, abbreviation for run in cryptic crosswords. And, and that all adds together. So the, the C-O, we, R makes cower, which means to cringe in fear. Okay, does that help me with this? Cunning adversary removing header from public record. What is a cunning adversary? Arch enemy, arch... Uh... Oh, archive could be... Uh, how does that work? Archival? No. That would be the, the... Oh, no, maybe it's the public record is is archival. Or archives. So cunning... Could cunning be arch? Adversary. Removing header. Cunning adversary removing... I... Cunning, cunning, arch, adversary, rival, removing header. It is archival. That was my first thought. So this is, this is clever. You have to look out for this kind of thing. You might think, well, public record isn't archival. Public record is an archive or maybe archives. But the definition actually isn't public record. I think it's from public record. So it's actually uh, an adjective. Uh, you could say archival materials, materials from public record. The from is part of the definition. That's clever and, and sneaky, but you get that a lot in cryptic crosswords. So cunning, so arch here is being used as a word for cunning. I don't usually think of arch as meaning cunning, but it must be a valid, it must be a valid uh, way to define it. Um, that's fair enough, I, I suppose. And then the bit that I had to think on here was adverse the, the reason I got arch is simply because I was thinking of an adversary as an arch enemy. And so for that in that way I sort of backed into the correct word there it's because it fit the AC crosses. Anyway, then the, the other bit that took more thought was figuring out that your adversary is your rival. And we've removed the heading from that. So we've removed the first letter. We're left with I V A L. All right. Here we have buglers struggling to grasp a singular style of country music. Okay, when I see, well, I was going to say bugler struggling looks like an anagram of buglers because we have a B and a G, but then there's this A, which isn't in buglers. Buglers struggling to grasp A. Oh, no, 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 no. Maybe that is right because buglers struggling could then grasp A. So in other words, the anagram of buglers sort of, inclo you know, encloses the letter A. Bugler struggling to grasp A. Singular. 
I think singular can maybe be abbreviated S. You can't just abbreviate any word with its first letter. That's not valid. You have to actually be able to uh, justify it via a dictionary definition. And I believe the times, this is certainly too true of the, the listener crossword, which I solve every week, which is also published by the times. But I believe as well, the standard times cryptics use the chambers uh, dictionary to uh, as the kind of arbiter of, wh- of what is allowed in terms of uh, definitions and abbreviations. So I suspect if you looked up S in the chain, in fact, you know what, I'm going to do that. I don't, it's not going to show up on the video, but I'm just going to quickly myself so that I'm not leading you astray, look up S in Chambers Dictionary and see, yes. So if you look up S in Chambers Dictionary, the fourth definition or the four, fourth meaning here is singular. So S can be used for singular. So I think how this works, oh, and, and I see what the answer is now. It'll be bluegrass, so, which is a style of country music, I suppose. I mean, I think of it as a style of jazz music or blues music, but um, but yeah, fair enough. So basically how this works is buglers, B-U-G-L-A-R-S, is anagrammed and struggling means we're kind of, you know, struggling with the letters. We're kind of messing them all around. That grasps or encloses the letter A. And then after all of that, we just have an S for singular. That all means style of country music, which is bluegrass. So there we go. Argue violently about evil fighter. Now, what this looks like to me is an anagram of the word argue around a word meaning evil. Now, argue has five letters. The answer has eight letters. So if evil were, say, the word bad, that would create the total eight letters that we need. And the definition would be fighter. So what do I think that is? Argue anagrammed around bad, possibly. There might be another word for evil, maybe mal, M-A-L, I don't know. Uh, Fighter. Argue violently. What do I think this might be? Gun? No. Fighter. Oh, that's so annoying. I'm not great at just jumping straight to um, to anagram solutions unless I have some crosses. So maybe we'll come back to that. Uh, what about this, With starting with an H? Refurbished hotel featuring one new means of direct access. Wow, there's a lot in here. So hotel can be abbreviated H. I'm pretty sure. Refurbished. Well, it could be refurbished hotel could be an anagram of hotel featuring one new. So one could be I. New could be N. That's a, va- that's a valid abbreviation. So maybe it's refurbished hotel, which then includes I, N. That would be the right number of letters. That would be seven letters. And the definition then would be a means of direct access. Uh helipad or something? Hella? No. That wouldn't, that doesn't, I don't think that means anything. Um, I'm just so bad at, at immediately inferring anagrams. Let's, let's see if we can get some crosses on that. Inflammation ends in callus, almost unbearably sore. Inflammation ends, maybe the letter N, the end of inflammation, but it says ends. This is plural. Not sure what that would mean. In callus, almost unbearably sore. Feels as though I should be able to, to, to get this, but I, I can't immediately see it. Hmm. Inflammation ends in callus, almost unbearably sore. I don't know. Sorry. Okay. Introduction to Rondo penned by terrible poet. Uh, introduction to Rondo just looks like the letter R to me, the, the beginning of the word Rondo, uh, penned by terrible poet. This feels like a lot of wordplay to fit inside four letters. What do I think this is? Introduction to Rondo. Oh, penned by could mean surrounded by. If you imagine something penned in by something else. Bad? Terrible? Bad? Brad? I mean, if R, why would Brad be a poet? You know, you could imagine, I don't think this is the answer, but I'm just, a way one could attempt to parse this would be the introduction to Rondo would be the R 
and it's penned. It's sort of surrounded. It's penned in by, oh no, it's not Brad, it's Bard, sorry. <laughs> a Bard is a poet. I was on the right track. I had the right components to the wordplay to arrange them terribly. So anyway, same exp- explanation. The introduction to Rondo is an R. That's penned, it's surrounded by a word for terrible, which could be bad. And then you get the answer defined by poet, which is a bard. Great. Okay. So what about this? Small dining stools, for example. Um, for example, is often e.g. Um, you know, if you saw that written in text, e.g. Um, you know, this this situation I'm describing, you would be, oh, for example, the situation I'm describing. Uh, small dining stools, for example. Small could, maybe it's not though. I mean, small could be S potentially. Dining stools, for example. Stools, for example. Stools could be seats. Stools, for example, could be seats maybe. I don't know. Small dining. Not quite seeing what's going on there. Sorry about that. Here we have stick publicity notice on this spot. Ah, okay. So this is actually fairly straightforward in the sense that it kind of just goes in order. So stick is the definition. A publicity notice is an ad. And on this spot would be here. If you said stand here, stand on this spot. So you just, those things go in order. We get stick means adhere. Publicity notice is an ad. On the spot is here. And that's the answer. Okay, does that help me out with refurbished hotel featuring one new? One new would be I N which I'm putting there because I-N-E is a pretty sort of, you could imagine that'd be a common way for words to end. Does that help me? It does help me. Yes. Okay, great. That That is, sometimes I find it helpful to just stick something in the grid in a way that it looks like a word might be made just in case it triggers something in you. And in this case it did. A hotline would be a means of direct access to a person or an organization or something. And it was as suspected hotel has been anagrammed it's been refurbished the letters are rearranged and they're featuring they're sort of containing one which is an i followed by new which is an n there we go hotline okay inflammation ends in callus almost unbear okay so a sore could be a sty maybe does that is there any way we can justify that inflammation ends in callus uh this doesn't almost unbearably sore. I, I, uh, I'm still not seeing it. That's so frustrating. What about this? Small, small dining stools, for example. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of stuck in this corner, aren't I? Bird sitting next to black dog. Black dog is sometimes used to refer to a depression or a mood or something. Bird sitting next to black dog. Um, the problem is there's just about 8 billion different kinds of birds. <laughs> there's so many birds. So, I mean, I don't, and I don't know if that's the definition of the whole clue or if we need a short bird name to serve as, um, to serve as the, uh, Part of the wordplay. Sorry, I'm just trying to think what this is. Bird sitting next to black dog. Ah, I do see what this is. Oh, this is very clever. So I was seeing black dog and I was thinking, ah, well, it won't be a literal dog that's black. It could be, I'm going to be clever. I'll think about this in a different way. Black dog could mean a kind of, you know, fit of depression or something like that. It, it's not even that at all. Black dog is not meant to be read as, well, it's, it's meant to deceive you by being read as a phrase. But to solve the clue, you have to separate black and dog. Black can be abbreviated B in, I don't even know what the actual context of that is. It might be something to do with pencils or maybe it's in chess or something. I don't, I don't know why black specifically can be abbreviated B, but I know that I've encountered it before and I know that it can be. So the sitting next to means a bird sitting next to black means the name of a bird next to a B. And because it said this sort of saying next to it could be in either order because they're just next to each other it's not saying which side each is on so the b it turns out goes on this side because the e is already over here 
what is a bird? Well, one, one kind of bird is an eagle. So the bird is the eagle sitting next to black, which is a bee. That all makes a beagle, which is a breed of dog. So there we go. And that makes me think sty works here. <laughs> that really looks like sty. Why is it sty? Sorry if you're seeing this and I'm, and I'm just completely missing it here. Inflammation ends in callus. Ends in callus. Maybe ends in callus is... Oh, no, 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 no. I see now why ends is plural. It's the... So inflammation, not sore. Inflammation is the definition, in fact. An inflammation could be a sty. You can get, you know, get one on your eyelid or something, an inflammation. It's... We're taking the ends in the words callus, almost, unbearably, and sore, which are S-T-Y-E. The ends of those words spell sty. There we go. Simple as that. Okay. Oh, seating. Seating. So stools, for example is seating. This is why crosses are so important and so useful in cryptic crosswords. Um, uh, because you, sometimes you can just jump straight to the answer and then work backwards from that. So small is S, as I suspected. Dining is eating. There we go. It's actually a very straightforward clue. Small plus dining, S plus eating makes seating, which is defined by stools, for example. So that EG was totally irrelevant because that was part of the definition. All right, great. We have one more corner left to solve argue violently about evil fighter. Right. Right. Okay. I still think this is going to be that, that anagram that I said earlier that argue anagrammed about a word for evil, but I, I don't yet know what it is. I'm going to come back to it later. Animal in a large herd, mostly close to sea. Close to sea could be ashore maybe. I'm just completely guessing. Uh, we'll see if I can just, I, I often do this when solving a cryptic because I'll just, if I see something that feels like it could fit the, the letter count and the definition, I'll just put it in and see if I can justify it to myself via the wordplay. So animal in a large herd, mostly. Animal could be an ass, maybe? In a large herd, mostly? I don't know. In a large herd, mostly horde. I don't know. Sorry, I'm not. I'm not quite seeing what this is. I, 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 I think that's wrong. Okay, what, let's look at this. Bachelor, far from prudent and impetuous. Bachelor could be B A or B S for Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science, possibly, or just B from the the B in that abbreviation. You know, in referring to a, a an academic degree. So let's just put a B in case that helps. Bachelor, far from prudent. So that could be something like um, rash. It is rash. Great. Okay. So far from prudent could mean not prudent. You're imprudent. You're not acting carefully. You're acting in a rash manner in a way that is far from prudent. And then if you put the B from bachelor next to rash or far from prudent, you get rash, which could be defined uh, as impetuous. If you're acting brashly, you're acting impetuously. Great. Okay. West African left from Portugal, perhaps. Oh, this is really a really interesting clue. I don't know what the answer is yet, but uh, I do know what the answer is. <laughs> so the, the reason I think it's an interesting clue is because the definition could conceivably be a West African, or it could be from Portugal, perhaps. So, But either way, it's you're describing somebody from a particular region or country, you know, from, from West Africa or from, from Portugal. I think in this case, it's it's someone from West Africa. Uh, and we can justify that through the wordplay. Left is often abbreviated L. L and R can are, are valid abbreviations for left and right. And those are used in many contexts, obviously, including taps. So, you know, left and, or no, not, not, not taps. That would be H and C for hot and cold. Uh, left and right is just used for lots of things because we have left and right hands and that applies to lots of instructions and things like that. Anyway, uh, we have L, and then from Portugal, perhaps, could be an Iberian. So if you're from the Iberian Peninsula, you could be from Spain or Portugal. So you're not necessarily Portugal, but from Portugal, but perhaps you are if you're Iberian. So, and that makes Liberian, which would be someone from Liberia in West Africa. So there we go. Great. Okay, animal in a large herd, mostly close to sea. Okay, this... Okay, well, it's not ashore, but it makes me think A does still begin it because we have animal in A large. So 
what I think we're going to be doing here is putting, well, actually, I could still see two ways to read this. It could be either animal in an animal inside of ALG, maybe, if large can be abbreviated LG. I'm not sure if it can. But then we'd have herd mostly close to C. That's probably not right. So maybe it's, maybe in is just the linking word. We start with A, we have L for large, then we have a herd mostly. Yes, yes. A herd could be a pack of, you know, a herd of animals, a pack of animals. But we're taking mostly, so we're only taking most of the word pack. We're taking the PAC bit. And then close to C, it doesn't mean close nearby. It means the close to the word C, the ending of the word C, which is just the letter A. So here we have alpaca. That is all defined by animal. An alpaca is an animal. So that is the definition. All right. Here we have a face covering said to be of use. A face covering. Well, so this, this, <laughs> I read these in, in this strange way that I, sorry, I'm not doing that on purpose. It's just instinctive because I'm trying to sort of split the clue up and avoid reading it in the way that, so there, there are two sort of ways to read a clue in a cryptic crossword. There's the surface read, and then there's the, the sort of artificial way you need to read it in order to get to what the setter is is actually doing with the wordplay. So the surface read here would be a face covering said to be of use. In other words, a face covering, a mask of some sort, which is said by people broadly to be useful. That's not what this means at all. It has nothing to do with that. That's so just to throw you off. Um, so it could be something like a, and then a word for face covering a word meaning said, and then that means be of use or to be of use, or maybe even just of use if, if the link is to be. So the reason I think it's that way is because it starts with A, which I think is just the letter A from the clue. So A, and then something meaning face covers something meaning said. No, it isn't that. It isn't that. This is a category of wordplay we've not yet seen in this puzzle. So said in this case means if you imagine something said aloud, it could be misheard by someone and be a homophone for a diff of, of a different word. So a face uh, covering, a face covering could be a veil. And so if you said a veil, you might mean a face covering, but someone else could hear simply the word a veil. In other words, to avail yourself, to be of use to, to somebody or something. So, uh, so the definition is to be of use and that defines the word avail, which is a homophone of a veil or a face covering. But it's said aloud, so we hear it this way. I hope that makes sense. All right, here we have argue violently about evil fighter once again. So argue violently about evil. Maybe, maybe it is, maybe evil is mal, M-A-L from the French. Because about could be Instead of meaning put it around something, put it about that, it could mean turn it about. If we have argue violently as the first five letters, no, well, sorry, I actually don't know how this is solved, but it just, it just as I was talking, it occurred to me that the answer is probably gorilla, a, a fighter, a gorilla fighter. Um, why, oh, ah, I see, okay, it was my original thought. It was argue anagrammed, so we have A-R-G-U-E, all of that is put about, it's put around a word for evil, which is ill. If you said an ill wind blows this way, an evil wind blows this way, evil and ill can be synonymous. So we put ill inside of the anagram of argue and we get gorilla, which is a kind of fighter. Okay, great. Okay, uh, we're at the other, this is our last clue. Okay, Rup uh, rupees invested in a fake religious retreat. An ashram is a religious retreat. Um, so I've, I've just seen that through the the definition and the crosses. I'm not going to fill it in just yet because I want to explain it before it, before the crossword is complete. Uh, so here we have rupees, which I think must just be able to be abbreviated R. And then that's invested in. So here's another case of it being inserted inside something. You've, if you invest something in something, you put it into that thing. So it's invested in a fake, a sham. A sham is a fake. So rupees are invested in a fake means we put R inside of a sham and then we get an ashram, which is a religious retreat. And 
Is that done? Did it work? It is. The puzzle is complete. Great. Would you like to submit it now? I guess I'll submit. <laughs> this is not a very impressive score because I've been talking through all this. Uh, it's, okay, it's fine. Um, well, there we go. That was the Times Quick Cryptic number 2551. Uh, it was a long solve because I did want to talk through all of these clues. I know that this is not a very intuitive um, form of crossword solving unless you're sort of accustomed to it. So I thought it might be helpful to to work through it a bit. And uh, hopefully that was a, a suitable and acceptable substitute for today's New York Times crossword. Hope you enjoyed it. And um, I will hopefully, I'm not sure, but hopefully I'll be back tomorrow with the proper New York Times crossword. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, do take care. Bye for now.